On this episode of Salt Lake Insider, we're at the baseball diamond where they filmed the Sandlot in Glendale with the buzzed coffee truck. On this episode... Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Salt Lake Insider episode number 11. We're in Glendale right now uh, in Salt Lake City and we have a pretty cool backdrop today. I didn't know this was in this exact spot, but it's kind of serendipitous that we found it. Um, we're sitting here with Trina, the owner of the Buzzed Coffee Truck. You've probably seen her truck around Salt Lake. Anytime coffee can be mobile and come to me, I'm all for that. <laughs> so that's cool. But we're here in Glendale on California Avenue at the baseball diamond where they filmed the Sandlot, what, 20 something years ago. And so this is the actual field where they filmed it. Um, you'll see on my Instagram story that they have like some 20th anniversary banners and stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll talk about the Sandlot here in a sec just because it's where we're parked. But um, for those of you that don't know that are watching the show for the first time, my name is Dustin Brome. I am the founder of Search Salt Lake and I'm a real estate agent in Salt Lake with Equity Real Estate. Uh, but enough about me, Trina, the Buzz Coffee Truck. How long have you guys been in business? What, what do you do? Why, did you, why do you do it? Just tell us about Buzzed. Yeah, well, we opened in July of 2016. So we've been rolling just about a year now. Um, it's been a wild and crazy and fun year. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> um, I originally started the truck uh, because the community where I live, Rose Park, there is not easy access to good coffee. Um, and gas I'm station coffee is not good enough for you? Oh, no. <laughs> and it's the worst gas station. I yeah. won't say any names. but It's not good. Um, <laughs> not, not good. <laughs> um, and I was working within the community at the time, and there was nowhere to get even a decent cup of coffee on my way to work and I got pretty fed up with it and right. a lot of um, I'm pretty active in my community and a lot of community members I was hearing really wanted the same thing and sure um, so yeah that's kind of where the idea came from I my dream is to have a brick and mortar in my community someday but this nice. you know it's a big investment and right kind of started to look mobility in the truck and here we are sure well and food trucks have really caught on over the last to, to me it seems like three or four years uh we didn't see them much back prior to that or at least i didn't but it seems to have exploded and i would think it's kind of more convenient in some ways to have the truck because if you pick a bad location you could always go get another one right it's true true yeah there's a lot less you know there's a big risk in opening a brick and mortar Absolutely. especially in an area where there's not a lot of economic development happening and so yeah this was a good way to kind of test the the rose park market out nice yeah. and, and so you primarily have your truck in rose park yeah we're there we're we primarily operate in like in the northwest quadrant of salt lake okay. um we're in rose park three days a week uh for gateway um, the downtown farmers market so we kind of stick to that northwest quadrant most days but we will awesome. the beauty of being mobile is we will travel exactly. where the need is exactly so i saw something I, I think it was on your instagram profile the other day that that was really impressive and we had already had this interview scheduled but i, I wanted to mention it because i think it's a very big deal you were nominated as one one of three one of three coffee shops right like what best coffee shop in Salt Lake it's so is that what you're nominated for surreal yeah I still can't believe it because we're up against such heavy hitters it's like David and Goliath but yeah so right. the Salt Lake Tribune um, I believe this is their second year they have this salt awards where yeah. they recognize local businesses and um, we were nominated in two categories there was uh -huh. a best food truck and best coffee experience um, and nice somehow I still <laughs> shocked and humbled and flattered and I can't believe it but yeah we're a finalist for best coffee experience against public and beans and brews you that's know? that's so, amazing yeah congratulations that's thanks, cool thanks so the awards are tomorrow and we'll find out and I, wow. I'm just like 
over the moon to even be a finalist. It's really cool. That is very cool. And I was going to ask when when the voting ends, when do they reveal the, the results? So that's cool. You'll have to follow up with us and let us know. Um, so tell us a bit about your coffee. Like why, why should somebody choose buzzed coffee over going to Starbucks or beans and brews or, or whoever? We're very passionate about the drinks we, we get out and our customers are, are very important and we want them to be happy and we want to make sure we're serving them quality products. So, you know, I did a lot of research with local roasters and even a few regional roasters, um, making sure that the coffee I was going to buy was, you know, responsibly sourced and farmers were being right. paid fairly. So we went with Rimini. They're a local oh, roaster yeah. that have, they've been around for a, for a while. And um, I, you know, I love them and I love their coffee and the customers love their coffee and they, they do really good stuff. So we're, we feel really lucky to work with them. Um, and as cheesy as it sounds, I think all of our drinks are made with lots of love. Like myself, my employees, I think I can speak for them that we lo really love doing what we're doing. And it's it's a lot of fun to make people's mornings. And um, For sure. Yeah. I know my day is made whenever I'm at some event and all of a sudden I see coffee available that makes my day. So, so that's good, especially, I love local coffee. Um, I admit I'm a Starbucks guy, but only only because I, I know what I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. Some might say, you know you're going to get crap, but <laughs> I still know what I'm going to get. Um, so whenever I can get local coffee, that's awesome. So knowing that you um, that you use, is it Rimini? Mm -hmm. That's cool. And I, so I'm looking at your menu over here. You have some pumpkin stuff, so obviously you do some seasonal stuff. Yes. Maybe the, some gingerbread and whatnot in, at the, Christmas time, right? Yeah, the pumpkin just rolled out. We were a little, you know, I'm... One of those people, I'm like, not until the first day of fall. So <laughs> we just started our pumpkin. Right. Uh, people go nuts for it. And uh, so we, yeah, we, our menu is constantly changing. We do have our, you know, our standard menu with a lot of the favorites that people can, can get. Right. Um, but one of our, so one of our seasonal drinks that we rolled out last fall was our Mexican mocha. And it oh. was just so unbelievably <laughs> popular that it's right. a it's a staple on our menu, and that's one of our most popular items. And I think that's another place where we differ from places like Starbucks and shops that do a lot of high volume is we're not using like pre-mixed powders, you yeah. know, or mixes that come in boxes or bags. We're using real cayenne, real cinnamon, real cocoa powder. And I think you can taste the difference and taste the quality, so. Oh, absolutely, I'm sure. Let's switch gear, gears here real quick. The Sandlot, we're at the baseball field where they filmed Sandlot. Why, why are we here? So <laughs> this is where she parks the truck. But what can you tell us about this backdrop? Because we may as well talk about it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was serendipitous. So every food truck has to have a commissary that they work out of, um, a commercial kitchen. Okay. And there is a great little mom and pop burger joint called Hook and Ladder that's just behind us in the parking lot. And um, I use that as my commissary. It's where we wash the dishes. And nice. Um, the owner, Van Turner, he's a, he's a great guy and does a lot for the community. And he is so gracious to let us park the truck here. It just happens that this is where the Sandlot was, was filmed, which right. is really cool because that's, you know, who doesn't love that movie? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it, obviously there's no direct relationship between Buzzed Coffee and the Sandlot, but it's where they park the truck. May as well talk about it. It's kind of cool. I've grown up in Salt Lake my whole life, and I, I knew the Sandlot was filmed here. I just didn't know this was the spot. I didn't know it was on California Avenue in Glendale. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So because the coffee truck's mobile and you can do business anywhere that you can park, um, what are some of the coolest spots that you've actually had the truck at? Um, we've done a, it's, it's been a lot of fun. We've done a lot of cool spots. Um, movie sets in the middle of the night that was movie kind of sets. crazy yeah. they shut down main street for a hallmark holiday movie there was you know it was 
think in July or August, so middle of summer, and they were trying to create Downtown? this winter scene. Really? Yeah, um, that was really cool. There's a Disney show filming locally that we've, we've catered for cast and crew. That's been a lot of fun. But probably my personal favorite, um, we did Red Fest at the U a few years, or not a few years ago, last year. <laughs> and, it seems um, like a few years ago, It does it? seem like a few right. years ago. And I'm a... I, that's where I went to school, and I'm a, and I love the Utes, and I was driving this big monster through campus, right. and that was a trip for me. I was like, I never thought in a million years I'd be driving a, an old FedEx truck on campus, like right to the Union. So that was a lot of fun too. That is cool. You mentioned FedEx truck. I've always been curious. Do they make because the food truck industry, from my point of view, has exploded? Are they making trucks specifically to be food trucks, or is that what you did? Is they are making? I mean, you you can get a really nice new, specifically made for coffee or food truck, cool. um, but it's more expensive. Obviously, really expensive, and yeah. you know, I starting out really didn't have a lot to start with, so we bought an old FedEx truck and. Nice. had a lot of help from my family and friends and lots of late nights and weekends and we figured out how to build the thing ourselves so nice. yeah that's cool you would never be able to tell it just looks like it's always been a food truck so um, what is the back to coffee I like to switch gears constantly because I'm ADD like crazy what is the customer favorite what's the most popular drink that you guys serve when it's hot in the summer the nitro is is a hit that's probably one of our best sellers our buzz chai the chai people rave about the chai that's one of my favorites it's really good and it's also made by Rimini they house nice. make it and have this special chai room um, and our Mexican mocha probably awesome yeah so anyone who has not seen your truck yet if they want to come out and try buzzed coffee how do they find you um we always post our our schedule on instagram and facebook we, okay. weekly so social media is the best way to find out where we are um we're the market's coming to a close but we're we're at the downtown farmers market on saturdays um that's always a fun place to come out and check us out but yeah good crowd there absolutely it's awesome fun. It's been a lot of fun so if they want to know exactly where you're at check your instagram profile mm -hmm. we'll tag it below um Awesome. Yeah, thank you very much for your yeah, time today. Thanks. Cool business, cool parking spot. Probably the best parking spot I've seen in a long time. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but thank you very much, yeah, Trina. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching Salt Lake Insider episode number 11 with the buzzed coffee truck. Have a good one.